it's Dr. Know It All. I'm with Reese Recon and Mick Kowitz, who is, what is your title for? Uh, CEO. CEO. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> the big position. So <laughs> anyway, this, it looks like the ultimate toy, although I did hear you're going to be using it for agriculture too. So Yeah, so this is the um, Rise yeah. Recon, yeah. and the Recon is an ultralight aircraft, okay. so it falls under the FAA regulations part 103. Okay. So it weighs 255 pounds. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That too and, looks like uh, it would weigh a lot and more than it, uh, has to fly 63 miles an hour or less. Okay. So it flies up to 63. Okay. And single occupant. Right. And I can teach anybody to fly it. Doctor Know It All can fly it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm Know It All, right? So I should be able to. You do should that. be so, able to do this. So you said you could. Yeah, but before we started recording, you said you could teach people in about 15 minutes to be about able to fly. About 15 minutes. I've trained a lot of so, people in okay. 15 minutes. And so there's now a the real, the formal training takes about an hour right. to go okay. through everything. Really, but even the formal training. Wow. Yeah. And I, I heard that um, no special license or anything like that. You don't have to have a pilot's license nope. or anything crazy. Nope. As so. long as you can drive a car, you can drive this thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's got a ton. So needless to say, it's got a ton of software. But let's talk about the hardware first. Before we get there. So, number one, how in the world do you get that down to 250 pounds? That's like, the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is it so, a lot of uh, advanced, like, carbon fiber composites? And so, this like frame that? here is a 6061 aluminum frame, but yes, okay, okay. the production frame is actually a, car it's a carbon fiber composite frame. Okay. Uh, we're working on the patent for that, so we're not disclosing all the details yeah, of it. Fine. But yeah. it, the frame, this aluminum frame weighs 43 pounds, wow. but our carbon <laughs> fiber frame only weighs 36 pounds. Oh, my gosh. And that so, is significantly crazy. Uh, lower yeah. cost. Yeah, Weight yeah. is everything. It's a fully Kevlar seat, right. all carbon fiber uh, control system, and uh, then just uh, the frames and the floats. Right. Uh, and uh, so we try and make it as uh, effective okay. and as efficient and structurally safe as possible. Okay. So it, what's the capacity for, like, a pilot? Like, how much can a pilot weigh? The payload is 250 pounds. Okay, so it is 250 and it takes 250. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as long as you weigh less than that, you're good to go. You can I mean, you can weigh more than it, oh, but okay. it just won't get the range, right? right. I mean, the batteries right. just serve, they work less. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Uh, so, okay. So tell me a little bit about the technology. Um, I assume, like, brushless motors, do you, are they proprietary so it's, it's, that you guys uh, make? Yeah, so it's six independent motors. Right. Six, okay. We call them propulsion modules. So okay. the propulsion modules are all identical. Okay. It has a custom uh, circuit board for the BMS. So each battery pack has a battery, and the battery in it has its own battery management okay. system. Okay. They're removable, rechargeable, and okay. you can replace them. And then it has its own speed controller, again, our design, and custom right. motors uh, designed for our specific purpose gotcha. with pro custom and propellers. And the batteries are where? The batteries are literally in the pods, right in the front. Okay, so they are. So they're they're all independent. Okay. They're on a high voltage bus, so right. they balance themselves. And if there's an emergency, you lose a battery, the other batteries will help you get to the ground safely. Gotcha. Okay. So, and yeah, I heard even potentially two, but at least one failure could happen yeah. and you can yeah, land Yeah, you'll get down. It's a little bit harder on the right. on the dual failure. Right. But because they're independent and they're yeah. controlled with their own inertia system built into them, it's not really an issue. You're not going to lose yeah. more than one at a time. Because as right. soon as you lose one, we say, get to the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's time to go. Right, right. So, all right. So that's very cool. So the batteries are in there, in inside the pod. Mm -hmm. And as far as removing them is concerned, it's just more or less a there's there's like a, a hole. There's a lever on the side. These are... Uh, a little different. We have another vehicle outside, okay. which is the production stuff. And I heard that's There's going to be flying possibly today, but definitely tomorrow. Yeah, it so. flew already today. Okay, it's going to cool. fly more today, is weather permitting. Right. It'll be flying all day tomorrow, the next well, day. I'm so. definitely going to have to go watch that because that sounds super cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Exciting. Cool. And um, let's see, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, the, 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 the propellers are carbon fiber. Carbon uh, fiber foam composite. Gotcha. Okay. And it also floats. That's also what I heard. It does. You can take off and land on water with it. Okay. Yep. That's amazing. So as far as the software is concerned, because obviously if you didn't have software, only an advanced test pilot would be able to fly this thing. So I assume you have a right. lot of software going so on. So there are degradation modes, right? Okay. So I mean, at the at the best case, you're in, with no degradation modes, it uses simplified vehicle operations, which okay. is an FAA term for you can hand, take your hands off the sticks, it remains neutral. Okay. So when you take off, you, you put the stick to center, it comes up, it stabilizes, it tells you you're ready to maneuver. Okay. Now you can go forward with the right stick, backwards, side to side, and then there's a thumb wheel that lets you rotate and pivot okay. on your axis. Okay. So it's yaw. Is gotcha. What is. Yeah. So, okay, so roll pitch yaw, right hand, and, and then, then left hand is heave. Okay. So up, down, okay. or neutral is just stay where you're at. Gotcha. Okay. 
So it's very sounds, easy to operate. Yeah, it sounds like if you've flown a drone before, you're going to have the basic If you've flown a drone or, you know, because we're in the ag world, right. uh, the, as a starting point, if you've used a Caterpillar backhoe, you know what you're yeah, doing. Okay, so yeah. So basically, same operational structure. Okay, all right. So it's exactly the same as that. So yeah, so tell me a little bit more about the use cases. Obviously, for somebody like me, I'm like, wow, what a fun toy this would be. Right. And by the way, what uh, uh, the price for this is going to be starting it's, price? It's, uh, MSRP is 150000 Okay. And you are expected to go into production? Third quarter. Third quarter. And you just put out this morning, right, that you just released the uh, the, the reservation the system yep. is actually available. There you go. <laughs> I don't so know if this will work, but anyway, people can <laughs> well, try to scan know. the QR code from you inside there. Know. But fly with Reese, so that should maybe do right, it. So. Right. But that sounds amazing. So, um, But, yeah, so as far as agricultural use would be concerned, like what what are you thinking about for a use case for that? So the, the common or use what case. What is it replacing? I guess that would be a question. So it's not, it's 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 giving you better access. Okay, okay. That's really what it, and also, time management. Right, so the better right. access piece of it is when your crops are wet, when you're seeding, you know, you have a blight going on early, right. you got to walk and you got a yeah. long way to go. With right. this, you can land and you, very minimal uh, crop compaction. If right. it's mid-season and you need to get to an irrigation system when it's dry, right. you have to walk it because it's a half a mile walk if yeah. you got your big long beams out. Right. With this, you can fly up and land right into it. Very cool. Obviously, a reduction in, in crop compaction, soil right. compaction, fence repair, cattle inoculation, location, uh, right. services surveying and finding material, uh, so all those different areas, okay. mining operations, oil rig operations, so there's a lot of use case <laughs> Anything scenarios Anything where you need it. to cover a lot of ground that doesn't have roads already built right. in. Right, so at 63 case. miles an hour yeah. with a 25 minute time, right. you can go 10 miles out and 10 miles back easily with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then if you, for example, had a really large plot you could create like drop-off caches potentially where you had batteries. Extra that batteries to yeah. be able okay. to plug in. And charging charge stations. As and far as the charging is concerned, it's just the basic kind of like pull the battery up, plug it in. 110 or 220, yeah, okay. pull it out. Okay. It's like, think of it like your Ego lawnmower. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can pull it out and you put in the charging thing, same principle. Okay. And and approximately, like with the 220 charger, about how much time does it take to charge An hour and a half, okay. 220, you know, I mean, depending upon how your batteries yeah. are balancing. And so balancing. you get about 25 uh, minutes of 25 flight time. Minutes of flight Assuming, time. I, if you flew slower than that, or you were just hovering, yeah, you'll be? get you'll yeah, get okay. more. So hovering actually is a higher workload. Oh, interesting. The, okay. the the further you go, the faster you go. Inertia helps. Yeah, I guess that's you know? true. So there you go. So that's interesting to know that hovering is actually one of the worst things. Yeah, you can it's do, one of so. the hardest things okay. to do. I could actually see this uh, just because I use a drone for cinematography a lot, but you know this. Outside of like things that you're thinking about with with ag and everything like that, it would be really advantageous to potentially you know attach a, well, a you know and we're, to we're it, not so. trying to replace the drone. A drone yeah. has a very a specific purpose, but you have that eyeball that you've right. got to know what you're looking for. Exactly. When your visual your peripheral vision is available to you and you right. can put your head on the swivel, you see so yeah. much more. Right. And that's right. the big difference. Like drones are being used now in irrigation to be able to identify leaks, right. but it's very difficult. You know yeah. they got to follow the line and with this you can do more than that right. you can visualize it a lot easier and you can actually land and fix gotcha. it then. okay I had one this was not my question but somebody else actually asked this and they said will this thing be allowed, allowed to fly autonomously at all or no require a pilot? that is okay. against the FAA yeah. rules that's, on part 103 that's, kind of that's what not I to say things won't change down the line right but we are not built it okay. is not designed to handle that right. in fact it's designed to specifically not handle that right, right now so uh, do you have detectors and things like that to ensure that a pilot is in the seat before yes like, yeah okay all right okay that makes really good sense wow anything that I've forgotten I mean this looks amazing I think you got it all I mean yeah. Obviously, okay. you know, we're really excited yeah. about delivering this to, you know, the world. Yeah. And uh, it is the first aircraft to actually fly at CES, <laughs> which is kind of an amazing <laughs> feat. Cool. You know? I didn't know that. That's so, amazing. <laughs> so that's a really big deal wow. for us. We're very excited about that. We've got some fun videos showing up on our cool. website. We've got Elvis flying it. That video is coming out here soon. <laughs> so it's going to be that's really fun. That's appropriate for Vegas. Yep, that sounds yep, about yep. right. So, And for if people are watching this and they're at CES, you said 15 minutes after the hour. Hour while the convention's 15 minutes going after on. the hour, WP20, okay. just out straight out the West Hall, yeah. and uh, we're at booth six, 6816. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and have a wonderful CES. Thanks. Thanks.